Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, to teach you. That's what it means, profitable to teach you. Paul is promoting here the God-breathed scripture, the written God-spoken scripture. That's what makes us wise for salvation and righteousness. The truth is in God and from God's word we have it. It's written. We only have to read. Read, read, read it. So, I would like to propose that we Remember the guidance of Jesus Christ. Good idea? The guidance of Jesus Christ. 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are of God and that the whole world lies in the power of the wicked one. Now, of course, that's John speaking to these, the brethren whoever this letter went to, it's the first letter of John. So he's speaking to the church of God and reminding them that the world lies in Satan's influence, lies in the power of, the influence of, the wicked one. Well, when you think about that, you could say the whole world is helpless. It's helpless for a reason, of course. Satan has authority, great authority. He's exercising the authority he's been given. God gave it. God's still in charge, but he's given Satan authority for a time. But the church has knowledge. The church knows. Look at the next verse. If you didn't turn there, it's just the next verse. 1 John 5, 20. He goes on, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding so that we may know him who is true. Okay, there is what a contrast. Did you recognize it? And we are in him who is true and in his son, Jesus Christ. So it's specifically speaking of the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. He, the Father, is the true God and the eternal life. The Father and Jesus Christ are one. So that's who John is speaking of, the Father and Jesus Christ. But you see the contrast. The whole world lies in the power of the wicked one, but we know that we have eternal life and we know the Father who is truth, has the truth. So that's the great contrast. Where is truth. Speaking to Timothy, Paul gives guidance. Second Timothy 3.10. You could turn there. There'd be a little reading there. Second Timothy 3, starting in verse 10. Paul is guiding Timothy. 
But you have closely followed my doctrine, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me in Antioch, in Iconium, and in Lystra. You know what sort of persecution, persecutions I endured, and the Lord delivered me out of all of them. And indeed, everyone who desires to live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. Persecuted in any age, no age, no time limit given, shall be persecuted. So here comes the lies. Now I want to proceed to the next verse, verse 13. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. That would be the, what we call the Old Testament now. The Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Some religions discard the Old Testament, which is able to make you wise for salvation. They decided to discard that section of the Bible. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine to teach you. That's what it means. Profitable to teach you for reproof, correction, for correction itself, for instruction in righteousness. So how would you know what's right or wrong? It's in the Bible. So Paul is promoting here the God-breathed scripture, the written God-spoken scripture. That's what makes us wise for salvation and righteousness. What are we convinced about then? Are we susceptible to rationalism? What is rationalism? What does that mean? The definition is reliance on reason as the best guide for belief and action. For example, my example, suppose you are confronted with a dire situation. Your child will die unless you declare your allegiance to the doctrine of the state, let's say. What do you do? You rationalize? Would you uh, swear allegiance to the state to save your child? That, it's easy to do that, rationalize that. It's a choice, a choice made by Adam and Eve. They started this age. There are consequences of rational thinking. There's been all the different ages. Scott started discussing that. Socrates, Aristotle, all those guys, the Greek philosophers, but then Later, we, be, we began to get the age of reason. It was called the age of reason. Then there was the enlightenment. Remember that? You, you didn't live that, that many years ago? Where is the light coming from, enlightenment? Where did that light come from? 
than humanism. That was a rationalization of a way of belief. It's all from the Middle Ages. Secularism. There's so many isms you can latch on to. Feminism. Modernism. What's that? <laughs> it's modern today. Postmodernism. Socialism. There's so many variations of socialism. Let's see, which is the best? All of them are a rejection of God, everyone, because it's all rationalization to do what you want, to choose yourself what's right and wrong. What guides us to choose right over wrong? There's several possibilities, several possibilities. There's the word of God, properly understood. You can accept the scriptures the way a little child would accept the scriptures. With meekness, acceptance. Moses was meek. Abraham believed God's promise. Matthew 18, 3 and 4 says, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So let's be as a little child, as little children, before the word of God. That's really what we should do. We should build up our knowledge, our knowledge of the entire Bible. We have time. Look at all the time we have. God gave us these, time, these years, many, many years. We probably wasted a lot of time all these years, but now is a good time to be appropriate with our time. Trust the word. That's what guides us, trusting the word. Wait for God. He will fulfill, fulfill his promises. Trust him. Abraham trusted God so much he did not even see the fulfillment of the promises, but he was held up by God as the most faithful, and all of Israel was developed according to the promises of, to Abraham from God. Then there is also the lead of the Holy Spirit. Be led by it. Pray, pray, Pray for guidance of the Holy Spirit. God will hear your prayer and he will answer you. So what, what takes us off of the narrow path? Because we're talking about fo following a narrow path. There is a wide path, but we want to stay on God's path. So we have personal convictions. Those can take us off the path. Personal convictions that are not supported by God's truth, his word. That's why we want to read the scripture. Historically, there's been frequent use of scripture to support privately held beliefs. Beliefs which do not come from God. That's what Satan loves. He loves to use a little piece of truth to fool you. So there is a teaching that God approves. For example, 
of eating certain animal flesh. You've read this. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Giving heed means listening to and considering. What do we listen to? What do we consider? Hopefully, primarily the Word of God, not all kinds of other issues. You know, there's always something new to suspect. But the Word of God is always true. Peter says of Paul's writings, also in all his epistles, all his letters, speaking in them of these things, particular things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of scriptures. That's my little proof that Satan and people use scriptures to deceive. So what takes us off that narrow path that we need to stay on? Personal risk. This is just an item. Personal risk. Job loss. Sabbath keeping requires Sabbath keeping. You can lose your job. You can lose status among your friends if you start keeping the wrong day. Sabbath. Personal risk. Will that take you off the narrow path? Or keep you from jumping onto it? And though are there always external influences, external from scripture, current events, wars, rumors of wars, rumors of every kind, not just wars, conspiracy, stories, believable ones, dates, people have set dates, are you going to get mad when the date doesn't work out and leave the church and leave God and stop reading scripture? Then there's speculations. I call them vain speculations. This takes people off God's path. Speculations are not based on scriptures or they may be misconstrued scriptures arranged so that they can be misused. It's so embarrassing. People make declarations about the future and then it doesn't happen. But they come back and make more. Keep these things, if you're trapped by them or enticed by them, keep them to yourself. Don't go telling people, oh, I heard this, I heard that. Well, what does the word of God say about anything? That's what to talk about. Will God be pleased if we teach brethren these specula speculative things? Do I want his wrath to be upon me? I am up here speaking. I'm not doing that. So which one of the isms has saved mankind from the ruinous path we're on? The wide path man is traveling. When any of the teachers of the church begin to guide brethren on the basis of personal ideas or private beliefs 
any concepts that are not solidly based on God's written word, when that happens and there's no resistance to it, we have a congregation. Would someone resist that? I hope so. Otherwise, there will be a scattering. The older people here, the elders among us, have lived through it, have experienced this. It has happened to us. This very congregation is a remnant that escaped divisive heresies. That's what it was. Taught little by little. Just a little today. Just a little next Sabbath. Just a little reinforcement. A teaspoon at a time. That's what happened. God's people were lured, lured, lured away from a solid foundation, which they had. They had a solid foundation, but they were lured away from it. It's not impossible. The great number of the brethren took it, took in toxic lies. The greater number. Toxic reasonings. There was a blind submission to authority. There was a culture of of authority over the brethren. The brethren were not allowed to say anything. It was, I heard it said from the pulpit, from the lectern, don't question people. Don't question the, bro the, the ministers. No, no. God will work it out if there's a problem. God will work it out. Don't you say anything. That's what it was. That was from headquarters, no question. There was a blind a submission to authority. Authoritari authoritarianism, there's an ism for you. Authoritarianism. They were the authorities, you were to shut up. That's it. Resistance was futile. It wasn't the Borg, but Within the organization, resistance was futile. It had to fall apart. It had to come apart. Resistance was not allowed. Our pastor at the time, Del Ledger, stood up to the authorities. We are remnants of believers. God is adding to our congregation, little by little. We're happy about that. It's very encouragement. The devil has been building his lies from the beginning. Teaspoon, tablespoon by tablespoon. The truth is in God, and from God's word, we have it. It's written. We only have to read, 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 read it. Lies are everywhere. We must stay on the narrow path. You have received this information based upon the Word of God. Every additional topic concerning the truth, which originates in Scripture, builds understanding leading to salvation. We hope you will personally review the Scriptures cited in this presentation. God will teach you if you ask Him. 
Until next time, good day. Good day.